All right, it's a uh, championship Saturday morning on the Crappie Masters National Championship. We've decided that we are going to uh, stay in Lake Hamilton the best we can. I'm gonna do my best not to leave this place unless I'm literally not catching a thing. But I don't see that happening. I think that there's fish in here. I just scanned it. It's early, it's about 6.30 right now. Start time's at seven. We're, we are currently in 36th place. That's the start of this video, 36 out of, I believe it's 105 boats, something like that, right at 100 boats, whatever. Uh, so, you know, I've only spent a day here pre-fishing. Uh, interesting thing, these guys are so good that uh, I identified two spots immediately, pretty, pretty quickly that had good fish. And <laughs> when I go to these spots, there's like, there's like a ton of boats. So they, they picked up on it too. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing. Partnered up with these fantastic companies. But anyway, positive vibes. My whole goal on day two of any event is to do better than day one, which is tough because a lot of the fish have been caught or spooked, etc. So we'll see. Hopefully we can stay in this cove all day and not move at all. There's about four key areas in here to fish. And I think that if you continue to rotate around them all throughout the day, uh, fish will reappear, reappear, reappear. Hopefully that's that's my theory anyway. So my mindset is uh, positive. So let's let's get this on here shortly. All right, thanks for joining me in this last episode of the National Championship for the Crappie Masters. We're down here on Wachita River, and uh, we're in good position. 36th place out of 100, 104, or five boats, whatever it is. Uh, we're feeling very confident. We're gonna stay in uh, Hamilton Lake. We are not moving, and this is the plan for the day. We're gonna, you know, <laughs> die from that decision or not. Um, but what I do notice right off the bat is that we have some of the lead boats in this tournament in this particular lake. So folks, we're in the right place. We just have to be able to stick those fish and put them in the boat. All right, that was the first good fish we had on the line. We actually brought it all the way up and we didn't put it in the boat. Folks, this has not happened ever since I got to the river. And so I'm a little frustrated as you can tell, but I'm holding it together because in the back of my mind, I've always got the Grenada experience that I had at the ACT event. I'm totally thinking about, hey, this thing can turn around at any point. So stick with it all the way to the end, no doubt about it. I said that I had some, you know, some of the guys in the leaderboard, the top five teams were in this cove, without a doubt. A lot of them were. In fact, Eric Cagle here will come up here really quickly. That's Eric Cagle right there. And he stayed in this side of this cove the entire time. But great guy, he's got his dog in the boat. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed that interview I did a couple weeks ago. You can go back and check it here. I'll link it actually here above if you want to watch it. It was fantastic to watch. Great fisherman. I always say you gotta start somewhere, even if it's a dink. And this is fish number one, folks, and it is definitely a dink. We've been struggling in the morning and uh, we're taking whatever we can get at this point. We're gonna get seven fish in the boat. And uh, then after that, we're gonna worry about calling them out. Seven fish, regardless of the size, that's always my first goal. All right, so I mentioned that I had about four areas in this lake that I was very comfortable with. So I started switching around to each individual part, uh, like basically like a, a hand on a clock. I mean, I was like in one spot and then the next, I would go to the next quarter spot and then I'm going to the next quarter spot. And at the end of the day, what I found out really quick was that they definitely were not on the structure like they were before. And 
unfortunately I didn't adjust I, I mean I'm just gonna be honest with you I didn't adjust I didn't realize you know that I had to experience all four spots before I would think about adjusting at least in my mind but reality was after the first spot when I didn't see them on the structure I should have said okay we need to go out and just go ahead and chase crappie and we didn't do that until eh, perhaps a little bit too late but regardless we still put some good good fish in the boat but we were struggling from the get-go because we didn't pick up on this earlier Very tough day. 10:30, and that's my first legit fish. 10:30, first legit fish. It happens to also be my seventh fish, but all the other ones are dinks. So we'll take it though. Big old drone. That's what a drum looks like. <laughs> Damn it. That felt so good. Well, we're we are uh, headed to the weigh-in. We'll see how we end up. Man, it was a tough day. I mean, I don't want to. I don't. I'm not one to make excuses. I'm not going to make excuses. Uh, I saw fish, and the leaders were in my cove and everything. And apparently, my bait decided it did not want to work. And I and I don't have a really excuse for it. It just it didn't work. And so I had to uh, go to other other baits and figure out something new to, that would work. And I wasn't as successful as I would like to have been. I've missed a few. I, I uh, didn't uh, set the hook good on a few. Uh, it was a really light bite. It'll be really interesting to see how everybody did because uh, that was one of the hardest days. I've never seen so many drum and buffalo, uh, is it a buffalo carp, I guess, it, it, in, in a cove in my life. And, you know, targeting crappie, those, those buffalo will look like and drum will look like a crappie. And you feel like you have to pitch to it. And so you do. And, I'll tell you what, 98% of the time it was a one of those two. I know that uh, you're only seeing a few catches on this video, but unfortunately the battery, because it took so long, um, the battery ran out and then also the SD card did as well. So I had to charge this as we're driving here to the weigh-in. So I'll show you some at the weigh-in. Got this. <laughs> <laughs> man, yeah, man. There's a real small one, but it's 10 inches. So there you go. You can kind of sense my attitude, right? It's not very good. And it wasn't, folks. That was an extremely tough last day. But that's that's what we call fishing. I mean, it happens. You can know and do and do everything you feel. Go by your game plan, which is exactly what I was going to do. Didn't matter who was in my cove. I was going to stick with my game plan. And um, at the end of the day, I struggled. 
on the last day of the event. But I'll tell you what, I had a great time in Monroe. We uh, we did fantastic. We certainly started off this event great, had some really All good All right, that concludes it. Looks like we ended up with roughly 18 pounds. A pretty sad second day, what can I say? Not excited about it at all, but at the end of the day, it's fishing and it happens. So you learn from the experience and you, you move on. There you go. So there you have it. We ended up in 52nd place, I believe it was. Yes, it was. So <laughs> right in the center of the pack, and we had a, just an absolute horrible second day. Um, but that's fishing, folks. And um, you know what? We've got seven to eight hours of a drive back home to kind of think and look back at what we might have done differently. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching another 3-Pound Fishing episode sponsored by these great companies.